Welcome back, Seth Bling here. This is episode 8 of Minecraft Mega Blocks, where I recreate Minecraft blocks at a 16 to 1 scale. In this episode, I've got cake and a pair of ender chests that kind of go together. So we'll start off with the cake. Uh, let me put myself in survival mode because I'm going to need to eat some cake. You can see I have a few hunger bars missing. I'm three and a half hunger bars down. If I go ahead and pick away at the cake, <laughs> uh, I am now two and a half hunger bars down and I can eat more and mm, delicious cake yum and uh, <laughs> get my get my hunger refilled uh, now I'm at a full full hunger I mean I can still eat the cake uh, it doesn't rely on me having low hunger but if I uh, if I do give myself a hunger effect Seth bling 17 100 so this gives me hunger for one second level 100 hunger uh, let's try it again there we go. A bit more hunger. Uh, there we go. I finished off the cake. I've got this button here that'll just pop in a new cake, <laughs> uh, which is nice and convenient. Now, uh, this this cake's a little bit different than than the cake we have over here. You know, the cake you have over here, you have to eat it from one side. Um, with this cake, you can take any slice you want. So if you don't like the end pieces, just take from the middle. It's it's all good. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's cake. Uh, let's go back into creative mode and I'll hop down below, show you the redstone, there's not really much to it. Uh, basically, we've got a redstone clock here, this is a 20 hertz redstone clock, and we basically got a bunch of test for blocks commands checking for each slice. So you have a slice here that's three blocks wide and it runs the entire length of the cake, and so I have another copy of the cake down here, and it's basically checking that the copy up above matches the copy down below. Now once I go ahead and, and pick away at this one, it's not gonna match exactly. If this block is missing, it's not gonna match the slice down below. And so when that happens, this comparator turns off, this torch then turns on, and a couple things happen. We give the player a saturation effect uh, for two seconds, which, which heals one food bar, and it also fills that slice with air. So that's all there is going on there, and and uh, the, the button here that, uh, that resets the cake just clones the cake from down here up above. So it uses a reference cake to do basically everything. So that one's nice and simple. The ender chests over here are a little bit more complicated. Let me show you how they work. Uh, in order to open the ender chests, you go right up to the, the latch here and it, it'll open. Makes a nice sound. You can see there's all these particles, <laughs> kind of like a real ender chest. Uh, now the ender chest, well, you can imagine what it does. If you put some things in one ender chest, you can ex access it from any other ender chest. So let's oops, let's do drop some items in here. This is the worst smiley face I've ever made. Come on, man. There we go. All right, all right. And so when I when I leave the ender chest, it's going to close right back up, and then I can come over to this ender chest, and the same thing is going to be right in here. Smiley face. I can pick all this stuff up from this ender chest, head back over to the other one, and we'll see that the items are now missing. So uh, it doesn't just work with items though, you can also build things. If I uh, build like a little arch here, and maybe put some pigs in here, maybe it's like a pig wedding or something, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just coming up with this on the spot. Over, over here, come inside, and it's right, right here again. Same thing. Um, you could put a redstone circuit in here if you wanted. Whatever, I'll just put some more stuff in. Uh, just show you if I leave the ender chest and come back, all this stuff is still here. The both the pigs, all the redstone, everything. And if I come over to this one, they stay synchronized. It's pretty cool. Um, so both of these have very similar redstone beneath them. Actually, it's sort of inside here. If I uh, if I come in here. If I start to rip up the floor, you'll start to see some of the, the <laughs> command blocks under here. Um, so there's, uh, basically the entire floor has command blocks underneath it. Uh, there's more over here. There's, yes. So there's a lot of command blocks uh, everywhere. <laughs> um, essentially what it's doing, well, there's a few command blocks that are just open and close the chest. Those are pretty straightforward. Basically, it's checking where the player is. If the player goes up against the latch, then it um, basically clears away the top part of this chest and clones in another the back part of the chest from a template, which I think I can 
probably fine if I go down here somewhere. There we go. Yeah, so here's the here's the top part of the chest, um, which gets cloned in. This is the template, uh, and, and this is kind of the back. It's a little hard to see, probably because of the lighting. If you here, let me grab a uh, night vision potion. Ooh. All right, so here's the top um, the top part of the chest when it's closed, and then down here is the top part of the chest when it's open. So those things just get cloned in, basically. Uh, I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> those get cloned in in order to, you know, uh, to create the effect of the chest opening, and, and a sound plays as well with the play sound command. Um, but more importantly, everything that's inside the chest, uh, whenever the chest gets opened, it get, every everything that's inside of that chest gets cloned via the clone command over into this chest and so that's that's why this arch was able to get cloned or yeah I think I built the arch over there got cloned over here and also when this chest closes it clones everything over there so that uh, so that basically they stay synchronized and the, the chest over there does the same thing uh, it clones all the blocks with the clone command and then also very similarly um, it teleports around all the entities that are inside of the chests so when this chest opens, it teleports all of the entities that are inside that chest um, relative by 32 blocks, because that's how far apart the two chests are. Uh, it clones them all over here when it opens, and then when this closes, it clones them all back over there. Or it doesn't clone, sorry, it teleports. Teleports them in, teleports them out, um, so that whenever you open it, you'll see the right thing. So... There's actually two copies of all the blocks, but only one copy of each of the entities. And when the when the chest closes, you might actually be able to see the pigs teleporting uh, for a frame. I I could see it. I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but that's how it works. That's how the, the ender chests work. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got for you in this episode of Mega Blocks: the cake and the ender chests. That's about it. Thanks for watching.